hey guys Staffs here welcome to my youtube channel in this video i want to show you how to install wordpress on namecheap or how to migrate an existing website uh hosted differently somewhere to namecheap so for the sake of this tutorial i have this website on my screen pro digital store this website is currently hosted somewhere else so i want to migrate this website to namecheap if i come to namecheap here I can see that I already have an hosting here for Pro Digital Store, but currently the website is still hosted somewhere else. So I want to start the process of migrating this website uh, from where it is currently to where to Namecheap eventually. There are quite a number of ways we can migrate our website. We can go the traditional route of going to our hosting account downloading our files and also database and installing it into namecheap but i want to go the easy route today because i want to believe that you are looking also for something very very easy for you to do you can see here that i have my website is updated to wordpress 5.9 and so we'll just come straight to plugins and we'll add new uh, we'll search for a plugin called Updraft. Uh, here's a plugin here. We'll, we'll install this plugin and also activate this plugin. So if we scroll down to Updraft uh, Backup and Restore here, we'll see a place for settings. And if we click settings, we will be brought here to Updraft Backup and Restore. So the shortcut to getting to here is for you to go to your settings and under settings you go to uh, you see a place for updraft backup so that will bring you here as well on the screen here there is a blue uh, button that says backup now so we'll try to backup immediately we hit the button we have this prompt here always ensure that you include your database and your files in your backup if you don't you may not have your whole website restored completely so we can now come down and hit the backup button now and now our database is backing up depending on how heavy your website is this may take a while so you want to allow this uh run through and backup all right you can see our backup is done and this is good so let's close this and now you will see that we have option here we have our backup you have the option to either restore delete or view our log uh, so uh, we, at the center here as well we have all the things that we have backed up so what we will do to download our backup right now is for us to eat all of these files and download them one after the other so if we eat database we have the option to download to our computer or to download from our web server so we will go the route to download this to our computer and we can see that our download is in progress uh, we'll, do, we'll do this for the remaining files we have as well all right so right now i have all my files uh downloading and this is good so i'll close this and let's continue the process so coming back to namecheap if you perhaps created an account with namecheap and you just want to install wordpress directly and you host your domain on namecheap like i have here for this domain here you can just come right here and click here and then you would see an option for you to manage this domain and if you click manage domain if you scroll down here to name servers all you have to do is to update your name servers to namecheap web hosting dns so once you do that your domain will start working with namecheap and then the next thing that the next thing for you to do is to install wordpress my domain right now is not hosted with namecheap it's hosted with dynodot so i want to go to dynodot and then sign in into my account so while my while my account is opening and my domains are preparing i can just go and search for name cheap name servers so i will see this option here that says using default name servers versus hosting for name cheap so if i click this and scroll down i will get to this point where i would see the name servers uh the default name servers and the hosting name servers for our shared hosting so you can see here that we have dns uh dns1 namecheap hosting web hosting.com so this will be the name servers that will be updating uh our, our domain to so i'll copy this and then i come to my domain provider i'll search for the domain yet so that is it currently it is pointing to ipage so i will change the name servers here by uh, updating the first one and then also 
you can come down here to copy the second one but uh, since it's just two i'll paste that here and i'll change it to two name servers uh, is modified it takes time for our name servers to populate all around the world what we can do to confirm the change of our name server is to use a tool called dnscheckers.org and if you come here you can put your domain here oh so i need to copy this domain again and then put it here and then change this to name servers and then we search oh fantastic you can see that most uh, places all around the world the name servers have been updated so there's a possibility that this may not work immediately it may take a while for it to propagate all around the world usually because i'm in the sub-saharan africa it always takes time for domains to propagate uh, where i am so that's that's it but at least you can you, that will give you an idea uh, to know how your domain is doing uh, with the change of name servers we can come here to this icon and then we can go straight to cpanel first of all on our cpanel i can see that uh ssl is not working yet so just search for name chip ssl uh, then you can sign in and then you, you can check the status of your SSL. So what we have here is pending. If it were to be a new domain, uh, this would take uh, just a few minutes. So we can see here it says that allow up to 25 minutes for SSL activation and installation. So if you come here, you can request if there is no request already, but mine is already pending. So I will leave this as is. All right, so we'll go back uh, now and then we search for Softaculous app installer because the next thing we want to do is to install WordPress. So once we launch Softaculous, the first app we'll see here is WordPress and then we have uh, three actions. The first one is for us to install and that's what we're going to do. So here I would have already have my domain highlighted, uh, which is good. So I will change my protocol. I want this to save as HTTPS since my current website is on HTTPS. However, note that we don't have an active SSL yet and that will be indicated here as you can see there is no trusted SSL certificate yet but eventually it will install and the website will be okay so we can come down here this is where you can uh, put your site settings you can put your site name uh, right now it's currently at my blog I will leave this as is and also your description uh, by the far right hand here, you will see that you can change your password. Uh, the username is admin. I will leave that. So I would add this password and then update my password. The email as well. Uh, this email is not active. I will leave it as is because I want to restore the old website uh, into this one. And the admin email will be replaced as well. So I really don't bother about this email currently. Also, there are some plugins here that are selected. Uh, limit login attempt. You can do that for security reasons. So I would untick this and then I will hit the install button. Uh, as you can see, our uh, WordPress website is already installed. So what we'll do right now is that we'll try to view this uh, site in a new tab. Uh, but we can see that the old website is still loading and that is to let you know that the domain has not propagated yet around me that's okay but what i can do to check uh what i can do for me to access the new wordpress is for me to use a vpn to change my location to where i know that the server has been updated so that i'll be doing now so i'll change my location to the united states and then i'll refresh so you can see that right now the website doesn't have an active SSL so it says it's not secured. What I will do is to hit the advanced option and then I can proceed to the website. So you can see that the default 2022 WordPress here is now visible. So this is the current state of our website uh, which is good enough for now. So what we'll do right now is to go to the back end of this WordPress website by going to the WordPress URL doing slash WP admin and that will load the backend as you can see so right now i have to put my details and also the password and then sign in as well as you get this problem so i would do the same and then continue and then i am in the backend of my wordpress website already 
okay so the first prompt i'm seeing here is that the php or oh, there's a php update recommended let's come to namecheap okay because i changed my ip address i will need to sign in back into cpanel that's okay we are here at the cpanel so what we can do now is to set for php and then you'd see some options here so look for select php version and then click that yeah you can see that we have current php version is 7.2 so if you click this you have several options up to 8.1 i select 7.4 and then i'll hit this to say set as current and there's an update so we'll come back to the to our wordpress dashboard and then we can refresh and follow the normal procedure and and you can see that this prompt is gone and that's it that's exactly how to update your PG version in case you get this prompt and the next thing for us to do is to come to plugins and come to add new and then we'll search for updraft and we'll install updraft and also activate this plugin so immediately we are done we, we have a prompt here for us to start so we hit the button here and then there's a place for us to back up that's not what we are doing this time around but if we scroll down here to existing backup there's a place that says upload backup files so we will come here we'll click there and we have the option now to drag all the files that we have back up here and then upload them onto the website so i have selected five uh the five of the files so i'm dragging the files here okay so we have some issue with our .hts dot htss file with memory limit okay so what we are going to do if you have these issues when you are trying to upload your file is for you to close it and then come back to namecheap so if you are in namecheap you can go to your file manager uh, once you open your file manager you can come to your public html and then go to uh, find your .htss file. Sometimes you come here, you won't find your .htss file. It doesn't mean that it's not there. So what you have to do is that you have to come to the top right hand corner here that says settings and click there and then you see a place that, say, that says show hidden files. So once you click that and select that, you will see your .htss file. Now we can see our .htss file. We can click it, edit it, and then we can, we have access to our .htr cells. Uh, so we have access already. So what we can do uh, for us to increase our maximum upload size, we can just come here and open a new tab. And then just search for increase maximum upload file size on WordPress. So if you do that, you can come to, you can, okay, I, I can go to WP Beginner. I think I trust this site. So you can see the third method here for .htss. So we can copy this code here and then copy them and come to uh, .htss file and then paste that paste here and we can update uh, this code and then let's come back to our page let's refresh and let's follow the same procedure let's bring in our file here as usual so you can see that our upload now is working i don't know how long this may take but let's give it time let's watch this our file upload okay so while the upload was while the upload was in progress i had get this error again uh so what it means right now is that the files of our website is quite bigger uh, for dosing capacity for the server resources it's pulling to to upload uh, so for us to save ourselves of time the best way to upload files like this if you are having this kind of issues within wordpress is to use ftp connection and ftp will give us direct access from a local computer to our uh, hosting account uh, so we will not have to play around with wordpress so when we come back to namecheap we can come here to ftp account and then we can create an ftp account now we have our ftp account created so if you come down here to configure 
FTP client, you will see the manual settings that contain the username, the FTP server, and also the port. I love, I love to use FileZilla. So you can come to Google and search download FileZilla in case you don't have that software. It's an open source software. And you can see here, the first result we have is uh, download FileZilla. Once you click this, you can come here and hit the button download FileZilla. So download the software and run it like every normal software. You will have an interface that look exactly like this. So what we'll be doing right now is to be populating our manual settings uh, with uh, on FileZilla. So I will change everything I have here. So I have dabs at prodigitalstore.com. So I will change that to FTP. My host detail is my server details, that's ftp.prodigitalstore.com and then my username would be dabs at prodigitalstore.com and then uh, also the password that I used and then the port is 21 and then I'll connect. Okay. And then I have access to my server already. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have uh, the correct access. My path URL is not correct. So I'll go back to, to cPanel here and I can see my path here is not correct but unfortunately I cannot correct this part so I will have to delete this entirely and then create another FTP account. I would manually click here for me to make sure that my path is the public HTML and then I'll create my FTP account. So I'll go back to FileZilla and then update the details and then I'll connect and you can see that I already have access to my public HTML and then I can uh, open the file up to Updraft and uh, come to WP content and then Updraft and once you open it, we can see that we already have the existing backup that was running there, but it didn't complete, so now it's a temp file, so we're gonna click the two and we're gonna delete them. All right, so now we can now manually copy this file, but I'll go up here and I'll draft it into the up, up draft folder. So immediately we do that, we will see that our files would be uploading. So this may take a while as well, depending, so we'll give it time for our files to upload. This is a very secured and the most reliable way for you to upload files to your server. So all right here, we can see that our upload is done and completed. Uh, so right now we can uh, close this and we can come back here, uh, we can uh, refresh our WordPress. So immediately we see that we now have an existing backup here and what we can do with this backup is to restore this. So once we click the restore button, it will bring us here. So I'll take all of them and I'll, I'll click next. And then also I'll continue the process and our files are restoring and this may take some few seconds yes our files have been uh, restored so if we come uh, here uh, let's continue the procedure so now you're supposed to uh, put our, our username and password to confirm if truly our old website has been restored let's just come down here and just visit the site directly so as you can see i have uh, my website already live here which is fantastic so I can come down here and still hit now this button here. Okay, no, now we have to sign in into the backend. So I'll be using my old details and then I'll put my password and then I log in. Whoops, I don't know what this error is about, uh, but let's change the URL back to wp uh, admin and then let's reload this page. Okay, now we are back in WordPress. The last and final thing for you to do before we end this migration process is for you to delete old files so you come down to all draft and you will see this option here for you to delete your old files and then endeavor to delete it and everything or the process is done and over with this is exactly how you can migrate an existing website from an old server to a new server the only thing that is left here is for our ssl to propagate and this may take a while uh, if you have done this and it's pending in nape you can give it some hours for you to uh 
propagate. This one will take time because uh, the SSL, there was a current SSL on the old website and then we want to apply for a new one. So it may take a while for the old one to go down for the new one to propagate. So give it some time if you have that issue, but if it's a new domain, you should not have an issue like this. If this process have helped you migrate your website or install a fresh website like a uh, like we did initially uh, give me a thumbs up give this video a like and also uh, let me know in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you so thank you very much for watching this video i'll see you in my next video and until then have a wonderful time